This is a quick video about Brian De Palma's Blowout, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a movie that I think should be on the radar of anyone who has even a little interest in art, and I'm going to talk about why. Before I go any further though, I should mention that this video will contain spoilers for the movie, and this is definitely a movie that you don't want to spoil before seeing. The part of the movie I'm going to focus on relies heavily on shock value to be effective, and hearing about it from a video like this isn't going to have the same impact as watching it yourself would. So if this is a movie that you think you might want to see, I really recommend watching it first and then coming back to this video. To recap the movie a bit, Blowout begins by introducing us to sound technician Jack Terry, who does sound work on low-budget exploitation movies. At the start of the movie, Terry and his director are reviewing their latest picture and discussing the need to replace a poorly delivered scream from one of the actresses. Kill it! A little later, while he's out at a park recording sounds, he inadvertently records audio of a Chappaquiddick-like event involving the death of a prominent politician, George McRyan. He soon becomes entangled in a political conspiracy as he's pressured by political actors to stay quiet about the event and to hide the existence of the crash's sole survivor, a young woman named Sally. He is told this is to avoid embarrassing McRyan's wife and children. But as Terry reflects on the crash and reviews his recordings, he begins to suspect there was foul play involved, eventually discovering that Sally was part of a botched blackmail scheme and that what seemed like a car accident was really an assassination. Meanwhile, the assassin has been attempting to find and kill any witnesses, leaving behind a trail of bodies in a plan to disguise his actions as those of a serial killer. Terry, feeling a duty to report the truth, attempts to gather evidence and present his findings to the public. I know what I heard and what I saw, and I'm not going to stop until everyone in this fucking country hears and sees the same thing. Much of the common analysis you'll see for this movie tends to emphasize its recursive aspects. As Terry pieces together what happened the night of the car crash, he finds a series of photographs taken by someone else who was there that night. By combining his audio recording with these photographs, Terry creates a film that allows him to show the car's tires were shot out with a gun. This, among other scenes, has led to the observation that Blowout is a movie that is, on some level, about filmmaking. People also usually back up this analysis by comparing Blowout to its spiritual predecessor, Michelangelo Antonioni's Blow Up. And at this point, I probably have some explaining to do. See, for anyone who's not familiar with the career of Brian De Palma, the director of Blowout, he's built a lot of his career on remixing and making different spins on other movies, especially Hitchcock's. Dress to Kill is a remix of Psycho, Body Double is a remix of Vertigo and Rear Window, he made a Phantom of the Opera adaptation called Phantom of the Paradise, which substitutes rock music for opera. He also famously directed Carrie, and then immediately followed it up with an intriguing off-brand version of Carrie called The Fury. Blowout is consistent with this pattern and that it's an explicit riff on the earlier Blow Up. Blow Up is a movie about a photographer who takes some pictures in a park and upon examining them later thinks he sees a man with a gun hiding in the bushes and a dead body laying on the ground. He tries blowing the picture up to get a better look in workmanship sequences that are reminiscent of Terry constructing his film in Blowout. He tries to tell people what he saw, but later his studio is ransacked and his photographs are missing. He returns to the park and finds the body, and again tries to tell someone, but it's gone by the next morning. De Palma took this premise of Blow Up and gave it a twist. In place of Blow Up's focus on images, he gave Blow Out a focus on audio. This is expressed multiple ways, not just through Terry's recording. For example, the villain draws out Sally by imitating the voice of someone else over the phone. But while many analyses are content to point out the similarities, and note that both movies are about creation within their respective mediums, the analysis usually stops there, and I haven't seen anyone point out what I consider to be the key differences between the movies. One interesting thing is that, while these movies are generally considered to be about artistic creation, the actual experience that the characters go through is less like that of an artist and more like that of an audience member. In both cases, the artists capture the important event accidentally, not intentionally, and then spend much of the movies trying to interpret what they've seen, much as a viewer would. But what's different about Blowout is that it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop with Terry uncovering the truth through his audio recording. It goes further and shows Terry making deliberate, creative decisions. And this is the key to the in my view, much more important and much more obvious point that Blowout is trying to make. At the end of the movie, after Sally is killed by the assassin, 
Terry's evidence is destroyed, and the truth of what happened is effectively buried forever, we see a despondent Terry repeatedly listening to the only evidence he has left, an audio recording of Sally being killed by the assassin. We watch him do this until the moment of the movie's final, gut-wrenching twist. Now that's a scream! Terry took Sally's final scream and made a creative decision to use it in the B-exploitation flick he was working on at the start of the movie. That scream was the only shred of truth he had left to share, and he shared it the only way he could. Sure, he could try to tell people what happened, but nobody would believe him. His evidence was destroyed. The official records contradict him, the police would contradict him, people would call him crazy, a kook. Unable to tell anybody directly what happened, Terry turns to the B-movie as his only avenue left to convey the terror and anguish of what happened. This is ultimately what the movie says about art. Art gets made for all kinds of reasons, but Terry's experience is a pretty common one. The experience of having something to say, something you need to say, but not being able to say it. Not necessarily because you're the target of a conspiracy, in this case that's just a literalized representation of the experience, but because people won't believe you. They won't understand. They might say they do, and they might understand on a purely logical level, but they won't feel it the way you do. The fear, or ecstasy, or anger, or excitement, or sadness. Whatever it is, it's not something you can just tell people. You have to show it to them. You could say that Blowout is a two-hour demonstration of the classroom slogan, Show, Don't Tell, but it actually shows you Show, Don't Tell, rather than telling you, which is what your teacher did. This is also why I said you're better off watching the movie than having it spoiled, because, sure, I can tell you about the movie and what it says, but you don't really feel Terry's frustration and anguish just from listening to me talk about it. Blowout is the best illustration of this dynamic that I've personally ever come across in a work of art. Ultimately, it's a movie that's all about truth and how art can be a vessel for hidden truths. Truths you can't say, truths you're not supposed to hear, or truths that can't be expressed in words. Sometimes these truths appear in places you wouldn't expect to find them. Blowout is a tragedy, and perhaps the most tragic irony is that the people who go to see the crappy exploitation movie Terry worked on will know more of the truth of what happened than anyone who watched the news coverage of it, and they won't even be aware of that fact. The movie is a reminder that when all other avenues are closed, truth can find refuge in art. <laughs>